new year now. Yes. So everything is much better, right? Let's hope so. Okay, let's hope so. Let's hope I think so. that's about as optimistic as we possibly can be. Mike Collins from Healthway Compounding Pharmacy here again with one of my favorite guests, Dr. Kerry oh, Tapuzian. Thanks. Yeah, so he's a hot shot in functional medicine. But today's topic <clears throat> is kind of continuing with the the issues about menopause, but we're going to focus on progesterone right, today. Right, progesterone. Yeah? So, what is progesterone? Well, it's a hormone. It's a it's one of the hormones that women make. Uh, specifically when you're ovulating, your progesterone levels like shoot up really high, and then if you don't get pregnant, they come back down and you have your period. If you get pregnant, they stay up high. Super. So why would we need to supplement mm. progesterone? Well, so when women start going through perimenopause, you know, and it can be anywhere from maybe 35, sometimes even earlier, or if unfortunately you had to have a hysterectomy, um, your progesterone levels are one of the first hormones that will start to go down. Right. And so some of the symptoms you might start having are heavy, heavy periods, painful periods. Uh, you might start having panic attacks, unfortunately, or mm -hmm. trouble sleeping, fast heart rate, yep. insomnia. There's yep. a lot of things that can that can happen, and this can happen at a fairly early age. Long list, long list. Okay, so what do we do about it? How do we give progesterone? What do we do? What do we do? What so, do we do? you know, you, you, uh, you can prescribe it. It can be compounded at a compounding pharmacy. Like ours. Like his. And what's nice about getting it compounded is that you can... Uh, set the dose or calculate the dose based on you know lab work. You check labs to see what your levels are, and then you can try to uh, calculate or figure out the, the correct dose for the person. Um, and then it also depends on if you're still cycling or not, because you don't want to take progesterone necessarily the whole month. You might just be taking it for part of the month, depending on um, what your particular situation is. Sure, that's great. So now there's a lot of different forms of progesterone, sure. including commercially available forms of progesterone. Yep, yep, so let's yep. talk a little bit about just the oral forms of progesterone, okay. because there is a commercial form of oral capsule of progesterone. Right, right. So when would you use that versus a compounded capsule? Well, so let me answer it this way. So the, the problem with the commercially available is that it only comes in two doses. It comes in 100 milligrams and 200 milligrams. And right. A lot of times that doesn't work. It's too high. If you take too much progesterone, then you'll have a hangover the next morning. And by the way, you're only supposed to take it at night, not in the morning, because it makes you sleepy, right. which is nice if you're having trouble sleeping. So we try to compound it, and then we'll compound it at a lower dose. Maybe mm -hmm. it's 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, and you can work up. So then you might think, well, I could just cut the uh, commercial one in half or something like that. No, you can't do that because it's made out of oil, like peanut oil. And mm -hmm. if you cut it, then it doesn't work. It's and we just... know we got a lot of allergy issues with peanuts. Well, so yeah, that's so for some sure. patients, that's not uh, an option either. It's we just need to option. compound it just to get rid of the oil. Sure. So yeah, that's, that's a great way. Uh, so we talked about unique... Um, this, the other options that you use quite often is even long-acting forms of progesterone. Sure. So in other words, there isn't a commercially available form orally that's long-acting. Right. And so we'll put different agents into that capsule to make it last longer throughout the night. Correct, which is good, which is really good too, because in some cases, um, maybe it's only lasting through half the night. So you're waking up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because your the progesterone levels are starting to drop. So if you're using an extended release, then it's lasting throughout the night. Perfect. Okay. So now cream forms, cream there forms. Are, are very few. There are a couple vaginal cream forms of progesterone, but that really often used. They're really used for other specific indications, whereas you use a fair amount of topical progesterone. So sure. when would you use that versus oral? Well, <clears throat> Topical progesterone, if a patient doesn't necessarily want to take a pill, if they want to use something topically, um, it's it's more it's more of a preference. Like for example, if a patient is having trouble with sleep or trouble with uh, anxiety, panic attacks, things like that, I might try the oral, uh, you know, as a pill first. Because what happens is progesterone, when you take it as a pill, it increases GABA, which is a neurotransmitter which helps calm you down. We like GABA. GABA. So in st if, uh, if, sounds if, cool. if that's, GABA, GABA, if that's GABA. not an issue, then we'll use it as topical. And some yeah. patients would rather just use it topically. Sure. You know, and it can either be used, you know, on your skin or it can be used vaginally too, depending on what we're trying to, uh, what the symptoms are that the patient's having. Sure. That's great. And so often 
we will compound it even in combination. If you're already on an estrogen, DHEA, testosterone combination, we can put that together right. with that formulation. Put it all However, together. sometimes prescribers like Dr. T will maybe cycle your progesterone a little different than your estrogen. So you might end up with two different products or like he mentioned, an oral product. If they were using it for sleep and you're already using a hormone cream, then we end up with two different products. But other than that, a lot of times we can put it together and, and often we need to do them separately. Yep. So yep. what else about progesterone? Anything else that we need to let our friends know about? Well, um, every once in a while, uh, and there's a really good book out there. It was a Dr. Lee. He wrote a book on progesterone. Right. And one of the things that he talks about is if you have an abnormal mammogram or a thermogram, which is also another test for screening for breast cancer, uh, he would recommend using progesterone topically right on the area of the breast where there was some abnormality, not necessarily cancer, but just some abnormality in the test that came back. Sure. And so sometimes we'll use it that way topically. Excellent. Excellent. Well, great. Well, please stand by for future episodes of Dr. T Speaks in our prescriber spotlight. Oh, we're calling it that now? <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, lots of fun. So, hey, stay healthy, my friends, and thanks for watching. All right, take care.